Hey guys, welcome back to another video, another Raleigh Reacts video, bitch. Do you guys like how sparkly and glittery my buns are? I mean, they're just so, they're just so sparkly. Ass rules everything around me, deep in that pussy. Uh, oh, sorry. I'm really fucking tired right now. Anyway, bitch, if you are new to my channel, what's up? These are my Raleigh Reacts videos, and I do them every Wednesday and Saturday, so make sure to fucking join us, okay? If you would like to send in a video for me to react to, my email is raleighreacts at gmail.com, right up there on the screen and in the description down below. You can't fucking miss that shit. I get people emailing me Raleigh Reacts to all my other fucking emails, bitch. I don't know how many times I say it. The name is literally literally the fucking email address. Before we get into this video, as always, we have to do the disclaimer. These people are not bad people, they just do bad things. So I might anyway tell you guys go hate on these people, send them death threats, send them anything that would any sort of that would reflect poorly on my channel or my videos, absolutely not. My videos do that on their own. <laughs> Very beginning, when they open their little eyes, I want to teach them two things. One, first thing I want to teach a baby foal as soon as he's born is humans are not going to hurt you. We're not your enemy. <laughs> oh shit, I feel like honestly we've been shitting on Clinton Anderson a lot, especially over the last week, but it's so true. I really don't understand how people defend this guy. This guy gets away with doing so many abusive things to animals and people just pass it off and say, well, it's okay because he's a world-renowned horse trainer. The title has no meaning. And I'm just over it, you know? I'm just like, there's nothing else I can say to people who want to defend Clinton Anderson because honestly, he's a whole special kind of human and I'm sure that his audience and his fans are a whole special kind of people as well. Spanischer Schritt ohne Zaumzeug und ohne Sattel. Lassen Sie sich von Kenzie Disley verzaubern, die nur mit einem Halsring schwere Dressurlektionen reitet. Klein auf mit Pferden groß geworden. Ich habe mich schon immer für das Natural Horsemanship interessiert, also für die Freiheitsrüstung mit den Pferden, beziehungsweise für die zu kommunizieren, wissen, wie die Pferde ticken, wie die Pferde funktionieren im Kopf her, was sie gerne haben, was sie nicht gerne haben. Wenn du dich mit all diesen Sachen beschäftigst. Okay, I think we all get the gist. Um, it's beautiful riding, and honestly, I have nothing negative to say about this other than the fact that um, I don't agree with her wearing spurs. I'm totally fine with people using dressage whips uh, when they do bareback and bridalist. I have one specifically for that purpose, and I, I've seen a lot of people comment stuff like, oh, she has a whip, like what a hypocrite. I've never once said that you can't own a whip if you're going to use it for the correct purposes, which is as a direct directional tool, not a punishment. You should never, ever, ever hit your horse, ever. And unfortunately, people use whips and crops for disciplinary purposes when that's really not what they're designed for at all. A whip is mostly just an extension to help the horse better understand you when you're riding completely tackless because sometimes shit can get a little confusing. I'm sure that's also why she's using spurs. I've seen a lot of bareback and bridalist riders. For instance, Alicia Burton uses spurs as well doing bareback and bridalist, not for disciplinary purposes, but just as an extension of their leg to help the horse better understand their cues, which is the correct way to use them if you're going to use them. I'm just personally not a fan of spurs because a lot can go wrong if you're riding a horse and something happens and the horse fucks up a little bit or you fuck up a little bit and your foot just gently grazes the side. Shit can get a little painful and aggravate the horse a lot. I mean, imagine if you had a piece of metal like scrape your side because the rider fell off balance and it wasn't because of anything you did. That's going to piss the horse off and cause a lot of problems, whereas a whip isn't going to do that. It's just going to you know, touch the horse's side. A whip doesn't hurt an animal unless you actually use force and beat them with it. But since we were partying, he decided to ride the pony. Gaston is five foot nine and weighs 170 pounds. Negro is just over two feet tall and weighs only 110 pounds. Falabellas that are 27 to 28 inches are much too small for an adult to ride. But Gaston unwisely lets his bravado get the better of him. Only now, he's about to get a lesson in underestimating an untamed animal. The pony is terrified. 
You can see that by the whites of his eyes and his mouth wide open and the running. With Federico capturing the action on his camera, Negro bucks Gaston off into the dirt. He is in imminent danger of having his bones crushed by the hooves of this pony. Then he turns around and sinks his teeth right into the small of Gaston's back. I've never seen anything like this before. Fucking good. It's about fucking time. I watched a video right as I was going to bed of a donkey doing the exact same fucking thing. Fucking good, honestly. You fucking deserve that. If you're a moron and you treat animals like shit, you deserve that. And I bet you this guy is like, well, I didn't want to hurt the horse. I just wanted to get on him and ride him around. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. That fucking hurts the horse. That literally is animal abuse. Honestly, it is a little sad because the way that they're portrayed this horse is that he's just some crazed attack animal. No, he's fucking not. He's defending himself. And now they're gonna turn this horse into some attack animal that's dangerous. Are you fucking kidding me? Jesus, how many fucking people do you need, man? Do you need a whole fucking army for one horse because you don't know what the fuck you're doing? Are you serious? I always tell people this, the more people you involve in a situation of you working with a horse, the harder it's going to be, the more difficult it's going to be to bond with the animal and train the animal. When you break in a horse or when you ride the horse for the first time, don't involve other people. You don't need all these other people standing there holding the horse for you. It's just going to make the situation so much worse because the horse thinks that he's being trapped and horses are fight or flight animals. When there's 20 fucking people around the horse and the horse has nowhere to go, he's He's gonna freak out versus if it was just you standing there with the horse and letting the horse know that he's safe and he's okay and he can trust you it's so much easier to work with a horse alone God, that horse has such a weak back. Honestly, that's like really, really sad to look at. Another thing I want to point out, I don't necessarily think anything they're doing is abusive. Um, other than the fact that I just don't think that they really know what they're doing. I mean, it is a different culture, right? We have to take that into consideration anytime you watch videos like this. They're not beating the horse. They're not kicking the horse. They're not whipping the horse or anything. I don't think the horse is being abused, but I do want to say that the halter that they have on the horse is definitely way too low on the horse's nose. And I see a lot of people saying like, oh, you can break a horse's nasal bone with hackamores and, you know, with bitless bridles and shit. That's not true at all if they're placed properly. I'll put up a few examples over here of where you should have the bitless bridles or hackamores placed on the horse's face so that way you're not in dangerous territory. Uh, there's never been any recorded cases of hackamores or bitless bridles actually breaking nasal bones. That's just a total made up lie. But I will say here that if you place a halter or a hackamore too low on the horse's face, you're going to risk closing or collapsing the nasal cavity on the horse because the further down you get, the less protection there is there for the horse's nasal cavity and so you definitely don't want to cut off the horse's air supply <laughs> oh god um i've had a lot of people send me zoe's video uh where she's feeding her horse coke from mcdonald's actually drinking it it's actually going down the throat <laughs> Oh, my lord. <laughs> and uh, a lot of people in the comments are like freaking out about it. I want to go ahead and address this because this is actually really funny. Coke is actually not bad for horses. I don't know where a lot of people got that from. Uh, there's been several vet studies and everything on giving your horses caffeine. Now, I'm not saying by any means go out and feed your horse Coke, but I'm just saying that 
as a treat every now and then, it's really not that big of a deal. And also, the other ingredients in there is just water and sugar, and sugar is in almost everything that horses eat anyway, as well as water, so Coke, it's really not that big of a deal. There's really nothing wrong with giving your horse Coke. Um, I don't, <laughs> I don't understand why people are super pissed about this. I'd be more pissed about people feeding their horses beer. Anyway, guys, that is it for today's video. Let me know what you guys thought. Did you like these videos? What were you thinking? Let me know in the comments down below. If you liked these videos and you wanted to see more, please subscribe and hit the bell notification because I know a lot of people have not been seeing my videos in their feed. But otherwise, I love you guys so much and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.